Welcome back to another Road to Master video. Today I'm going to show you how to have the cleanest game of League of Legends. Uh, yeah, basically showing you how to play the macro out in uh, in League and how to snowball transition leads into victories. All that lovely business. Now I've been a bit of a Blitzcrank run... <laughs> Blitzcrank one trick recently. Uh, so I'm playing a lot of him and one of the reasons I like playing support is because it's less for you to worry about as far as your individual kind of like farming and all that rubbish uh, which means it is easier for you to just focus on the macro side of the game so it allows me to have games a bit more like this now let me quickly show you my runes guys or tell you my it runes I can actually show you them in the spectate battle with this is a diamond three game d3 uh, I've gone uh, I'm in resolve primary with with uh, Sorcery secondary. My result primary is aftershock, uh, and then kind of standard stuff. I have bone plating and second wind, uh, and, and the last one there is revitalize, the one that gives you bigger shields because that works with your passive. And in the sorcery tree, we have celerity for more move speed, and I actually have mana flow band. It gives me increased mana, which works with my mana shield, my passive, and also just in general, blitzcrank has high mana costs. So we're going to start this game right here off. Uh, not leashing our bot lane because he doesn't need a leash. Now this is the benefit of having, uh, if you're a jungler, of not starting bot side. It allows your bot lane to go and do things at level 1, which might ca catch the enemy team by surprise. Uh, and Anili is starting with a trap, so she doesn't need this leash. So this allows us to start in this bush here. Uh, otherwise we would just be, you know, leashing Anili right here. Uh, and so what's, what's going to happen here uh, is we're waiting in this bush to see whether maybe they run down the river getting greedy after a leash or if they get a bit, if they're a bit late to lane they'll run down here uh, and blitzcrank has very strong level one because you just do this you grab someone and boom i pop my my ignite just instantly popping that ignite which means that uh, it scares nami off there uh, and also it means that if this does tend in, turn into an extended fight uh, we have that healing reduction for the heal if that were to come through from Kaiser, which does. So we get the heal and the flash out on Nami, which means there's nothing to save Nami anymore if we want to go aggressive in the future. Uh, and as it turns out, Nami for some reason decides to get up the mission and just dies. Diamond 3, guys, okay? This is Diamond 3. Uh, don't be sitting there saying, oh, well, uh, Nami made a, a huge mistake, but that wouldn't normally happen. Uh, you just got lucky. Well, of course. Of course, that was dumb. <laughs> but capitalizing on your enemy's mistakes is an important part of playing uh, League. And, you know, if this happens in D3, guaranteed it will happen in your games too. No one saw that. That's fine, no one saw that. <laughs> Alright, so we just killed Nami here. So what we're going to want to do right now uh, is we want to try and push this uh, under the tower as fast as possible. We don't want to get ganked right here, hence the ward. But just get this under tower, and then we can go for a recall. Lucian's going to go for a cheap first item, which is the Blade of the King, which doesn't uh, cost as much for him to uh, to buy. So he's just going to get out of here and, and pick that one up. I was looking for a cheeky mid roam, but that's not going to happen because uh, there's a skull crab there, and the way the lane is, it's not going to happen. Uh, and right now, I'm not recalling because I don't actually have enough gold to get anything. I can get my boots, but I really don't want to recall yet. I, my first bag I want to get is, is the upgraded Targon's item. As you can see here, uh, I have this Relic Shield, but I want it to go into Targon's. I want to get that Targon's Brace. That means cashing in on minions, uh, I can do it more frequently, uh, which gets my support quest faster. A more sustain in lane as well. So I don't need to recall here, so I'm not going to recall now. You could argue that's a mistake. You could argue I should just recall anyway, buy a tier 1 boots and a control ward or something. There is an argument for that. That might be the correct call here. But I, I personally just like to get that uh, target as a brace as soon as possible. So I don't need to recall, so uh, I'm, I'm not going to recall it. Uh, notice as well how we picked up this minion wave here. I'm just going to rewind really quickly here, guys. Just made sure that this minion wave right here, we tank this minion wave and just stand still here and tank it. This is really, really important right now. Because if we don't tank this, this minion wave is going to go and walk under the tower here. Then it's going to die to the tower. It's going to be hard for us to last hit it as well. But even if we do get every single last hit, what's going to happen is the waves are going to uh, reset their positions. Those minions are going to die. And then what would happen is, uh, right now, instead of this being uh, the situation here, we'd be pushed up to about here. And there would be equal minions on either side. Whereas right now, we're way further into our... 
uh, side of of the lane, which is good because it means we're not overextending, and it means the enemy team is overextending. Obviously, therefore, they're more vulnerable to getting killed, uh, and we're less vulnerable to getting killed. But also, there's actually more minions from the enemy team here because they haven't died to the tower, which means it's going to keep pushing on into us. There's one, two, three, four, five, six plus the cannon minion here. So three fighters, three casters, plus the cannon on our side. And the enemy team has that wave, the three fighters, one, two, three, the three casters, one, two, three, and the cannon, plus two casters left over from that previous wave. So that's, this is still pushing in, whoops, <laughs> still pushing into us, guys. By the way, I haven't had a haircut. I just, I'm not wearing my headset. Before you ask, because I know you're going to ask, uh, it's not, I have not had a haircut. So we get to deny this cannon minion from the enemy team here. Kaiser now is, is losing even more CS here. Uh, and you can see the CS difference right now. How the shit does she have more CS? You know what? Ignore that point. But either way, she gets denied the cannon minion, which is a big deal. Now, targets, guys, you want to make sure all your relic shield that you're saving those for uh, melee minions and cast, uh, cannon minions in the early game. Obviously, heavy focus on those cannons because the more gold that you leech from your targets. Uh, the faster you get your support quest, because you need to get like 500 gold with it. And, yeah, you want to make sure that you're not wasting it on casters, because then it'll just take you longer to get the finish the support quest, which means you're not going to get your uh, support item upgrade, which is the wards. So you want that as fast as possible. So right now, we have more minions than the enemy, so we're just going to push this in here as fast as we can. And get this all under the tower. Follow this minion wave here so that it goes under the tower. Uh, maybe look for a cheeky little... Grab out of the tower if we can, but obviously nothing too much going here. And Nidalee using this time to invade the enemy jungle. This is what happens if you have what's called lane priority, which means you're the lane that can move first. We can move first because we don't have to worry about losing loads of minions to the tower. If Kaisa and Nami moved, they, there's a chance they could lose those minions to the tower. Uh, and so, you know, they don't really want to move, honestly. So again, we're just trying to push this in here. I've got a good amount of gold to recall. Lucian has a good amount of gold to recall as well. So we're just going, we're going to try and push it as best we can. Uh, this is where, honestly, personally, I am at my weakest. Uh, not just champion-wise, but just as a player. Because I'm not very good at playing the lane mechanics specifically. I'm, I'm okay at them, like you saw, like freezing and stuff. Like, I'm okay. But, you know, I, I could be playing more aggressive. I, I think, like, aggressiveness in general in lane phase is probably my, my weakest part. So there might be some times here where you're watching this thinking, hmm, he probably could have done a bit more here. And, and you probably would have been right. So, Lucian's going for that Blaze Ruin King, which means he has a short, a smaller, I guess, um, item. He needs less gold before he can recall, basically. If he were going for, like, like the BF Sword recall, he'd need 1300. Uh, for his Blaze Ruin King, he only needs, like, long swords and that kind of stuff, so... And for me, I've upgraded my Relic Shield into the Targons, and I've got T1 Boots and a Control Ward. So I'm happy here. We're all good. Uh, and I'm going to skip forward a little bit here. Just making sure you get those cans as well, guys. And uh, put some vision down. Getting rid of that Blast Cone, because that means that the enemy now cannot use that Blast Cone to jump over the wall and gank us. So we're pretty, we've got pretty good vision here for any uh, aggressive plays from, from Kha'Zix. Uh, or decent vision for that. What would be ideal here is if this ward was like up here, but obviously that's harder to put down or it's more risky to put down. Uh, and we can see uh, by this ward here, when this ward gets put down, it's really important for us to know whose ward it is. Because it's either Kaisa's ward because she's up, to, she's up close to this wall, or someone's put a ward from over the wall here, right? It's one of those two things. And it's really important for us to know which one it is, because if it's Kaisa's, we don't have to worry about it. If it's someone else's, we need to be really afraid, right? Uh, now, it is possible for you to get a warder in this bush from hugging this wall here. It's a bit tricky. You put your mouse around like this area, uh, because the way that it works is the ward will pop out on the closest available uh, position. So if you make it so that wherever on the wall you're putting your, your cursor, and place, therefore placing the ward, that it's like the closest point is in the bush, that's how that ward gets put down. It's tricky, but it is something you can do. Uh, and similarly, this guy could be doing the same over this wall. Uh, so there is a way for you to know what whose ward it is. Uh, and what you want to do is you want to click on the ward and you want to hover over the ward's kind of like buff bar, which uh, on the spectator overlay, it's down here on the bottom left. Uh, but when you're playing your games, it will be something like... Uh, uh, on the on the top on the top left of your screen, if you can see that, I'm putting my car where my cursor is. It's kind of like up here, 
uh, and then the buffs are kind of under around this area just under the target frame uh, and you want to so you want to click on the ward it will come up here and you want to hover over its ward icon which we're seeing here it will come up with this totem trinket ward this ward is revealing the nearby area now the important thing you want to look at is the source so this is telling you who this buff is coming from uh, and this buff i.e the ward being existing it says source rayoa kaisa so we can see that this ward has been put down by Kaiser. Now you only have like two seconds to take a look at this before the ward goes invisible in an actual game. In this case, it's easy because it's being revealed by a control ward anyway. Uh, by looking at that, we know that this is Kaiser's ward, not Kazix's or Orion Soul's ward. So we know that we don't actually have too much to worry about here. So uh, we, you know, that that's good peace of mind. Now there are more enemy minions and allied minions, so we're not going to be going too aggressive anyway. Uh, but level 6 is, is the big part of this next game, uh, next part of the lane phase here, where at level 6 I get pretty strong because I get to fart on people. Uh, good ward here spots out the Aurelian Soul. So we're just going to go really safe here, don't need to play aggressive, we don't want to throw the game. We can see Kha'Zix topside, we know Aurelian Soul is bot, or he was bot, now he's moving up to the mid lane again. Uh, easy peasy lemon squeezy, no over aggression. And again, this is probably where... Oh, God. <laughs> I was going to say, this is probably where I... Uh, I'm not very good as a as a support or as a laner because I don't go as aggressive as I should do. However, I actually just completely proved myself wrong. Uh, yeah, with this play, so we saw Red and Soul move off off this ward and go up like that. So we know he's not here. We saw Kazix around this area and running along like this. So we know Kazix is not here either. So it's just these two people, and I've just hit level six. Lucian just hit level six as well. So now I'm going to go aggressive, and this is how you want to play it as Blitzcrank. You don't really want to lead with the hook because people can flash that or they can just dodge it. If you want to guarantee yourself the kill, you want to lead with your a fist. So you either want to run up to them or as I do here, flash fist them, ignite straight away so that that grabs the uh, the hill. Uh, and then I fart and I, I buffer the grab at the same time. Which means that even though I'm actually bubbled in the air, I'm still getting my grab. So if we look here, if I speed it up and then just really slow it down here. Whoa, 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 whoa. So if you look here, my fart's going through. It says I'm stunned here because I'm being picked up by... This is the, the bubble has hit me here. But I'm still grabbing it as I'm stunned because I pressed like RQ really quickly. So it kind of put both of the thingies in at the same time. Now this Kaiser gets ridiculously low. Uh, Lucian, Lucian has his ult. He has his, his flash. There's, she shouldn't survive that. I mean, it was really close. Like it's really close. Like she should be dead there. But either way, good stuff. And now we can push this tower down because we know... Yeah, Kai's not going to be there. She has to recall here. Uh, so she can't defend this tower. Good move by Nili to get in as well. And we can... Or it's already a bit low. Not that low, but it's a little bit low. Uh, and what we can do here is we can just quite simply knock it down. So we're going to get the first tower... First tower for our team here. <laughs> uh, from this from this move. Just from going aggressive and uh, getting Kai's a bag. Even though she's not dead, she may as well be dead. Because she has to go back to spawn here. Uh, and afterwards... Now we can go for Dragon because Ocean Dragon is the best dragon in the game. Uh, and now what happens after this, because this video is all about accelerating your leads and like, snowboarding macro and all that stuff. Uh, we don't want to go bot lane anymore here. There's not really much point. Why? Because if we go bot lane still, what are we going to do? We've already got the tower. Uh, if we're pushing, we're going to push even further out, which makes us quite vulnerable. Uh, it, you know, uh, and maybe we can try, if Nili comes down, we can try and farm the enemy bot laner. But what's better to do here is to actually lane swap topside. This means that it gives us basically like another lane for us to push down and get a tower down. So we're going to go top side and we're going to ask Singe to come bot side here. Now the lower elo you are, the harder this is to do because people don't really want to lane swap. Uh, in which case it's okay to go back to bot side, but just make sure you have this side of the jungle warded. If you're going to do that, make sure you ward it up. Because if not, uh, then you're going to be in a bit of a pickle because you're just going to get ganked. <laughs> so make sure you have the wards up. Now, luckily for us, as we lane swapped, Kazix was trying to counter jungle, which was a bad timing by him. And he dies. And then we call Nexon as well. So, two people down, top side of the map is open for us. We want to go for the Rift Herald here or push down the top tower. Our Rift Herald is easier to do because, you know, yeah, this one's just easier for us to do. So, we're going to take down the Rift Herald here. Lucian is still pushing top side. But he might find something as well, for sure. Kaiser dies because I grab her because I'm playing Blitzcrank and that's what I do. Uh, and then we can move to the top side here, uh, and we can use this rift tower down in the top side. Get this, get this tower down. Uh, we know as well the lane swap's going to be coming through. We see Renekton here, Aurelian Soul is bot side, so we know that you know the enemy bot lane is going to try and match our lane swap. So they're going to be coming here, uh, which is why we stand here because we know they're going to be coming through. And lo and behold, there they are. 
Always engage with the fists because you people are waiting to flash your Q. So don't let them do it. Just walk up to them and just, pew, just fist them. Engage with the fist. Easy peasy, lemon squeezy. She's dead. I've already put a ward down here for this precise reason of knowing who's coming up to rotate. Who might be coming around to gank us. Uh, we see that it's Kaisa coming up here. Uh, now we could use the Herald, but we're going to recall instead. I think this is, a, is, is fine. We don't know where Kha'Zix is. We don't know where... Uh, yeah, we don't know where Kha'Zix is, and we know that Kaiser and Nami, uh, they're both alive and they're probably coming topside, so... Uh, no, just don't put the Herald down, that's fine, we can use the Herald to get it mid lane, because I think that's also a good use of our time. So, either way, top lane has now been pushed down. A little asterisk here, by the way, for when we rotate topside, we do not have our topside tower, so it's very important that we stay safe. Uh, and again, we keep vision so that we don't get collapsed on and, and get killed. The fact that we killed Kha'Zix and Renekton made that really easy for us to do. We killed them, uh, then we went in, up into this area, got, had some wards down here, we took the Rift Herald, and, and we just had good vision in general, got this ward down as well. Always had eyes on the mid lane, so that was okay, but it, didn't, it, it wasn't a problem for this game. But in theory, if you're going to a lane that doesn't have uh, a tower to protect yourself, then yeah, that could be a bit tricky. So we're going to see some mid lane now as well and use this Rift Herald to get this tower down instead. We're just going all around the map here, getting these outer towers, putting a ward over this wall because that's going to save us, uh, protect us from you know, any kind of champion that might try and get this from over there. Uh, and then we're just going to try and get the second charge from the Rift Herald into that mid lane. Don't necessarily need to do any more, just get that second charge. Uh, and then we also have this water down here, so we're just as protected as we can be in this scenario. Now we, ha we have Singed here too, so that kind of helps us a little bit. So I know that we're protected from this side, but just just warding these sides whenever you're sieging lane is really important because it stops you from getting collapsed on. Uh, and again, Kazix is coming down here, and this is my control ward here. We're going to see him come through, so he's not going to be able to do anything to us either. Uh, now, what we should do right here is just group up, uh, not split up. Just, yeah, just don't split up. Just group and grab the Irelian Soul, fart on him, ignite him. Not quite going to die here, but he's going to get close to it. Almost gonna, very close to dying. Really close to dying. Doesn't die, but it's fine. We we kill guys. Uh, Kazix. I don't know where Kazix went. Where did Kazix go? Oh, he he recalled already. You know, but that, that's okay. Uh, and now this has opened up a mid lane for us because Kais is dead. Uh, Kazix is probably recalled because he was in a low in our base. Uh, Running soul is low as well, so he can't reliably step up here uh, and protect this tower. So these kills give us this tower as well. So that's another tower for us. We've now got four towers. Just uh, really good stuff. And it's all about, if you're not noticing a pattern here, guys, it's not about just playing for kills, running around the map trying to kill people. Kills are great, but they're more like a means to an end. Uh, that end being objectives like towers and dragons. Uh, so all good stuff. We've taken two dragons now, two ocean dragons, which are great because uh, early on they give you so much regen, which is really good for the lane phase, but also good if you want to siege down towers and if you're playing any particular champion that might be mana hungry, uh, then having that regen is solid. So let's take a look here a bit at the item builds. Uh, I'll pause here just to talk a little bit about them. Uh, Renekton's going for a standard one, Kha'Zix as well going for that lethality build. And not much to talk about. Kaisa still has not completed her um, Storm Razor, which is what she's going into. But Lucian has not only got his Blazer and King, but he's also building into that Black Cleaver. So, you know, Lucian's reaching his early... Like, Lucian's so good early game, and he's reached his items. Kaisa is meh at this point in the game, and she's not reached her items yet. Uh, you know, Nidalee is, is going... For the damp, whatever you know, standard stuff coming out here. And personally, if you're playing Blitzcrank as well, what I love to do is I get this tier. Uh, I try and rush the Targon, so I upgrade my my support item, get Mori boots after that, uh, and then I often go Zeke's at this point. Zeke's just so good, especially if you're snowballing. I think Zeke's is really solid, so that's what I'm going to be going for next. So what do we want to do at this point in time, guys? We want to be going for this uh, dragon that's respawning, but there's no point us going mid here unless we get some kills uh, because we can't really siege this tower. The further into the enemy base it, it gets, the harder it becomes, or the further you push, the harder it becomes to actually kill uh, or to siege these towers, right? Because minion waves don't take as long to, to come and defend. Enemy players don't take that long to come and defend. So instead, what we're going to do is we're going to push up both these side lanes. Top lane's already pushing for us. Uh, and this dragon is what's respawning next. So we want to be around this bot side. We'll pick up this dragon. Uh, and Lucian's prepping our bot side as well. So what's going to happen here uh, is we're going to go for this dragon. And then 
look at these side lanes. Now, the top lane we're not going to go for because obviously bot side with dragon, we might go for that one. Uh, but we see Kaiser there. We have knowledge of where Kaiser is. She's top side. Someone just popped this thingy magic here as well. So we know that's probably Kazix. Yeah, so question mark pink goes down on there. And we have this bot lane mini wave pushing plus two. So we take dragon and then we're going to rotate from dragon to this bot side. Uh, bot side's home. And it's really important as well, something I did beforehand, and what I'm doing more of now, is prepping vision for all these plays. You can see, I went up here and I got the vision down here. I've got my sweeper around this area. If we look at the enemy team's vision, they are completely blind and in, in this uh, side of the map. Completely blind. I look, that's because I've ensured that they will be completely blind. Uh, and this ward here is really underrated. It's so good when you're sieging this tower specifically sees people coming out the base gates and more importantly sees people come down the lane so you know exactly what you're dealing with when you go for a siege so we have really good vision here we know we're not gonna get uh we're not gonna get collapsed upon uh, we have the mini wave in a good position we know Kaiser's top side we know Kazakh is probably around there as well so it's all together i mean singe can probably be top here i don't think singe needs to be here uh, honestly i mean singe is yeah but either way, we're sieging as a group here. This is the point where we're kind of overextending a little bit. We don't really need to be here. We do have another minion wave coming in. So the aim of the game right now is to, is to get a kill with this minion wave to then try and push down this tower. Chances of this happening are relatively slim, but this is why I play Blitzcrank, because I think with a Blitzcrank, uh, it's possible to make these plays. It gives you a high chance of making these plays. But we still have a pretty good catch team, you know. Singe just presses Ghost or whatever. You know, he can just go in. It's all good stuff. So Kazix tries to get a bit aggro on the side there. I'm waiting around for him. We, we pinked it so that you know, the face itself. Kazix is dead now, so we have got that kill. But he's not really the, the person we want to kill here uh, because he's not really going to be defending too much. Kazix is not the defender. This guy is. So I flash grab this dickhead. We get him. Beautiful stuff. Like I say, this this is partially why you just play this rank because that is a kill that you would not get on pretty much any other champion. And he's really good at getting those catches. We killed two people here. We know Renekton had to recall because he went a bit aggressive. The team had to engage onto us. That's so we're just going to take the tower. So uh, they engage onto us. They can't do it. And, uh, just, just some more kills here. Just run, literally just running at people. We're just killing them. Guys, Diamond 3. This is not a Bronze 5 game. I know the enemy team is not playing well. But it, it, it's like... You make... You make the enemy team play uh, look bad when you play well, right? And, and if this can work in mid diamond, this will work in your elos as well. I guarantee you it. Okay? I guarantee you it. Not every single game, you know, not every single game where you go into uh, and you'll have a game like this. This is why no one climbs to challenger with 100% win rate, because every game is different and it's not always going to be like this. But um, you know, it, it, it happens. It's, it's definitely possible. Obviously, uh, you can do it, uh, and yeah. So at this point, we pushed down the bot side. Now it's rinse and repeat, but for the top side slash mid. Uh, top side should be the primary primary focus. Primary? Primary focus. <laughs> because that's the outer tower that's up. Uh, obviously getting kills in, in the meantime, moving together as a unit to get some of that vision down as well. We do have a mini wave pushing it into that mid side, but, it, but we're, we're looking for that top because that is uh, the easier one to push down. Getting vision here as well, one here and a similar ward. Uh, like I pushed up up here, but for this one, so again, this vision right here, and I, and I swept all this vision as well, we've got control wards down here, uh, I used my sweeper, this vision tells us exactly what we're dealing with when it comes to the siege right here, so we use this minion wave, uh, uh, and we siege. So we see, we, we know, we see three people here from this ward, we saw Nami here from that ward as well, Kazix is dead, or he, he was dead, so he's not going to be here. So it's easy peasy, lemon squeezy. And again, this is a similar spot to what we were in just before. Um, where it's a bit tricky to uh, to siege, because this is one of the easy ones to defend. But, you know, you can still try and do some things, right? Uh, now, Amnion Wave is dead, Rex has gone bot, Kazix is dead as well, so we know it's just these three people. Um, we, should, uh, we can do the force here, like, like you're seeing, we just force, and <coughs> Singe use Ghost and Flash to get this pick. Force that stuff, and now the game's basically done. But what we could do here, if this was going to be a bit more uh, a bit cleaner, I guess, or, or, or the, the higher percentage play here would be to kind of wait for our bot lane to, to be pushing in with the super minions, and then we would go aggressive up here when that was happening, and then we'd make Baron as well. Uh, when 
you know, before we can, we can push and stuff like that. Uh, but there it is. 20 minute victory, just the cleanest game, the cleanest game you will see, really. Uh, and you can do this in, just using your brain you can do this, you know, like it's not, it's not rocket science, you know, just, just use your brain where you have to go, push, focusing on those towers, uh, moving together as a team, and vision helps as well. So I hope you found this video useful guys. If you did like it, give me a cheeky thumbs up and subscribe to me for more. Hope you guys have a fantastic afternoon, evening, whatever it is where you are from. Again, thanks so much for watching. Have a good one, and I will see you in my next